Welcome everybody, we're here in the Second Swing Tour Van in our Minnetonka location. My name is James Tracy, I'm one of the master fitters here. I'm here with my friend and colleague Thomas Campbell. He's also one of the master club fitters here at Second Swing. He's also our local robot. Uh, he's a great player, plays professionally in town, and we're going to utilize both of our brain cells um, and skill sets today to go through some of the new tailor-made irons, specifically the new P760 irons. Uh, we're going to do a little comparison between the 760, the 790, and the 770 and figure out how a better player like Thomas kind of reacts to those different heads. We use some TrackMan numbers to kind of go over some of the differences that we've been seeing in our fittings and uh, hopefully just help you guys out on the, uh, on the online uh, world figure out as you're looking at coming for a fitting or you're looking at new irons for next year, kind of how, how some of these club heads compare to each other. and. Um, kind of listen in as some fitters talk shop. So looking forward to it and let's get started, Thomas. Sounds good. Really excited to uh, try out the P760 line. So I know in the past when you and I have worked on irons, Thomas, if I remember you're playing a set of 718 AP2s. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Um, so, you know, from TaylorMade in the past, that 770 iron's probably a close cousin to that AP2. You know, what are some of the things that, you know, when you're changing irons, uh, especially with the head, um, as a focal point, what are some of the things that you like to look for and whether that's look, feel, or performance um, when you're choosing a new head for your bag? So look-wise, the top line it is important, so I don't want that to be very, you know, I don't want that to be crazy big, um, but you know, I'm, I, like I said, I understand that, you know, I don't get the chance to practice a lot anymore, still like to play competitively a lot, so, you know, knowing that I'm going to have a slightly larger line as opposed to playing an MB or something down along those lines these days. Um, so look-wise, it's still going to look like a player's iron, essentially. Yeah. Um, Feel-wise, you, know, I, I, you know, as long as it comes off the club face pretty, pretty crisp, a little bit softer, so obviously forged irons, you know, obviously they have a softer feel. Um, but, I, you know, it's got to feel solid to me. It's yeah. got to feel solid. Um, and then kind of, I guess when I'm playing, I like to flight it a little bit lower than usual, just for me, I like to feel like I'm in control of the golf ball. Um, coming from New Zealand, I've always played in the wind, um, so that's always been a transition for me, liking to flight the ball a little bit lower as opposed to um, a little bit higher. And obviously, that's been a transition for me um, to knowing obviously golf courses over here are a little bit different to the kind of link style, but I still like to flight it kind of in that mid-range as opposed to trying to get it really high. So. Do you feel like when you're looking at TrackMan numbers, do you try to get that flight down, you know, peak height wise? Are you looking more at launch angle or are you looking more at spin when you're trying to figure out what iron gives you that optimal flight? It's kind of a combination of both. Um, launch, I, you'll probably notice I typically launch it just a little bit lower than what you would probably consider for a 7 iron around kind of 15 to 16 degree kind of launch. Okay. Um, and then um, peak height. Kind of around about that hundred mark. Okay. Um, no, it doesn't usually get way, way over that, um, but it's never, you know, crazy high essentially. Yeah. No. So for you, anything kind of that ninety to a hundred feet, you would consider kind of your go zone. Correct. Kind of that right window. Okay. Yep. Cool. So well, we've got I got a seven seventy in your hands right now. That's the same shaft I think you're playing in your gamers that Project X LZ yep. six point five, um, and then the the Titleist uh, Pro V one X. So let's capture some data with the 770. And you know, in our, in our fitting environment, you know, we would usually hit you know three or four shots um, with a customer to kind of get a baseline with, with with each club that we look at. Obviously, since you're a little bit more, uh, I'm gonna utilize your robotic skills here a little bit more. Let's hit. Uh, we'll kind of go through each one: the 770, the 760, 790. We hit three with each. And with three again, so I have a total of six shots. Yep. And I think that'll give us some pretty good feedback as to what kind of numbers you're getting with those heads, and we'll keep the lie angle and the uh, and the shaft and length all the same throughout the test. It'll be a good apples to apples comparison there. Uh, so let's uh, let's kind of clean this up here real quick, and we'll start getting some depth. Sounds good. Typically, when you're hitting a seven iron, especially you know kind of with a wide open target like this, are you usually playing more of a fade or more of a draw to your target? It's like a gentle draw. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's one thing I've been working on swing wise is I used to fade the ball and I was, you know, now I draw the ball just a little bit. So okay. that's, that's more swing changes than anything. Uh, but typically just a little bit of a draw. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, let's, fire, let's fire through with that 770 and then we'll okay. switch it up and try some of these other hits. P2 
talked about how you are kind of big on the top line and look. How does the 770 look to your preference? You know, it looks pretty similar to AP2. Um, maybe just a touch thicker. Yeah. Uh, but pretty, pretty similar. Pretty, pretty, pretty similar size, kind of, you know, kind of east to west. Um, but it's, it looks pretty, pretty close. Okay. Maybe just a tad thicker. Pretty solid. How'd that strike feel to you, Tom? Yeah, it felt pretty good. That yeah. felt kind of like my normal, normal golf swing. Yeah. Oh. Very nice. All right, let's swap that out real quick. We'll throw that, kind of go right up the chute here. We're jumping to that 760. So obviously, you know, the 7 iron's right where that speed foam begins yep. with the 760 iron. So, you know, same loft um, in a seven, 33 degrees from the factory on these two heads. So it'll be interesting to see here how that speed foam and that new design affects things like ball speed, um, feel, you know, obviously for a better player, you know, you incorporate some of that hollow body design and how does that influence feel yep. and look. So what kind of first impressions just dropping that thing behind the ball, what do you think? How does that compare to the 770? It looks just a tad more compact. Um, top line is definitely just a tad thinner as well. Looks closer than my AP2, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, so it looks pretty, pretty close to that. Yeah, that was a bad swing. That's what that delete button's for. Pick those up. What, um, you know, one of the things I noticed too is that, you know, 760 is a little shinier, right? Whereas yep. 770's got some of that softer, um, kind of a satin almost look to it on the top line. So, you know, with AP2's being a little more chromed out. It does that might look give shinier, you a, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, that might kind of give it more of that titleless look, I guess. Yep. It feels quite a lot softer. I would say that though. I think the TaylorMade R and D team would appreciate that, right? If that was kind of one of the goals, right? Softer. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, it, it feels just a little bit softer than the 770 does feel. For you, is softer better or softer just an observation? I like the feel of softer. I mean, forge, the forge feel is always, you know, is a, I think a good feel. I'd rather feel it off the club face as opposed to just bouncing off the club face. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Good. Let's, well, do one, let's do one more. One let's more. Attempt. You said that first one was kind of. Yeah, that hard. first one was definitely a bit of a mess. Yeah. It's early here in Minnesota. We'll give you a breakfast ball. <laughs> it's one of those November swings. Let's jump in, let's hit that 790 a few times. Obviously now we're really changing the dynamic for loft. So you know, we're yep. gonna anticipate here some ball speed, um, certainly a little lower spin typically. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that it was one of the kind of selling points and drawbacks for 790s for kind of the better player is that, you know, those seeking a little bit more distance certainly are gonna find it with 790, but some players, you know, want that spin for control get your distance consistency up. So it'll be kind of yep. interesting to see how how far those separate. You know, just a really quick analysis there to the left side of your screen there. I mean, that 760 and 770, uh, we're both totaling out a very similar number. Pretty minus, close. Yeah. Minus the outlier there. So, yeah. you know, with the same loft, you know, that's something that's probably pretty predictable. Um, you know, it's obviously in those really long irons where you know, the five and the four as that speed foam and that chassis get a little bit bigger. You know, I anticipate maybe a little more of a distance boost in 760 over yep. 770, but let's see, let me just punch in real quick that 790 head for you. Let's Sounds good. See where this compares. I actually play the uh, three iron 790 in my bag. You do? I play it a little bit more like a driving iron. Cool. So that's, you know, does, it does go quite far. I do really like it. <laughs> do you feel like in the longer irons, the 790s, 
give you some stopping power? Or do you like that club more for like a tee club or? For me, it's a, kind of a tee club. So yeah. if I'm trying to hit it like 250 off the tee, it's my three iron driving irons kind of my placement iron essentially off the tee. So, so that so. ball speed and spin is more kind of a distance component versus a, you know, I'm trying to land the ball soft. I'm trying to get it close to the pin. Yeah. You're not using that iron into the greens as much as you are. Kind well, of set the up. three iron now. Um, yeah. Yeah. So three yeah. irons just. You know, it's going to be low considering how low I normally hit it anyway, so it just, yeah. Okay. It's more just kind of like the driver iron piece for me. But. Well, all right, couple that 790 and we'll. Right away, I definitely right notice that the head is just a little bit bigger. That still looks pretty good though. I think it sounds different. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that pattern just grew. Man, man. So what do you say the difference in loft was between this and the 760? So if you're looking at Duff. the 760s, the 7 iron is uh, 33 yep. uh, from the factory. Uh, the 790 is 30 and a half from the factory. So, you know, plus or minus. So, and a half. so you're, yeah, you're talking about a good half club, but obviously uh, there's more than a half club of extra ball speed there, I think. At least on the last <laughs> one. Caught every dimple, that one, for sure. Hey, the ball speed, you know, if I'm in a driver fitting, you know, we're chasing ball speed all day long. You know, you're trying to maximize those clubs. Sometimes for a better player, you know, you, you, stand, you stick them with a mid iron that's got a bunch of ball speed. That, that can be a scary thing. Yeah. You know, if you're used to hitting seven irons, you know, like you said, somewhere around 180 yards of carry, and then now all of a sudden you have a seven iron in your bag that now is a 200 yard club. If you have a 200 yard shot over water, <laughs> and you know it's your seven iron, but you're used to hitting six or five. Sometimes that can add just a, a pre-shot uh, swing thought that's not good, Definitely, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it just depends on the player. You yeah, 200-yard I mean, carry, that's, that's pretty impressive for a seven iron. That's a lot of seven. I just feel like I'm crushing this. Yeah, yeah you slap that pretty good. Okay. I'm kind of jump back and do a consistent test here back and forth. This is the 770? Back to the 770, yeah. yeah. We kind of go through these three in the same order. You know, it tends to happen in a fitting environment, it's, especially on camera, too. You get a little pumped up, so the more shots you hit, the more your swing loosens up. Uh, you start looking at data, and that kind of teases your adrenaline a little bit. So, um, you know, get a good head to head test. We'll jump on a little bit these. further than those other ones yep. earlier. Yeah. Getting warmed up a little bit. Well, it's only about 10 degrees outside, so it takes a while this time of year. There's no question that 770 or those smaller heads, you're getting that nice little right to left falling shot yep. pretty consistently. You really haven't had yeah, gone away from that. That is kind of a full fly right there. Just a very gentle baby drawer, yeah. essentially. You no, know, I think that you know, depending on the player, you know, sometimes as you make the heads bigger, you would think that you know it's easier to control that club face um, just because of the larger size. And in fact, probably it's the opposite for a real good player. You, know, you really can sense and feel that club face and release it better, especially if you're trying to make the ball do what you want. Yep. Um, so, you know, all six shots there with the 770, the smallest of the three, um, definitely, you know, good, uh, good representation of the ball flight that you're trying to get. Let's see how that 770 jumps back in. Or excuse me, 760, sorry. All these numbers, <laughs> keep, your, keep your tongue straight. Pulled just a little bit. You know, with, with some of the uh, aspects of 770 and 790 incorporated into this club, do you feel like, does it feel like a child of the two? I mean, do you feel
feel 790 and 770 living in that iron or do you feel like 760 is more like 770 or more like 790? It looks more sense. like 770 to me. Okay, um, so looks wise. Looks wise. It's definitely got this just just that softer feeling to it. Um, the 790 feels just really solid. Yeah. Uh, so that's one one thing I do notice. Um, but it just feels a little bit softer. I like the looks of this the best out of the three. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's you know probably because it looks pretty similar to the irons I'm playing right now. To be honest, yeah. maybe it's to do with that shiny shiny face because the yeah. other two don't look as shiny. I think anytime you get that chrome look. It kind of is more of that traditional kind of player's iron. You know, anytime you go to something that it's a little less shiny, it's a little more of that modern look. You see how kind of Mizuno and their JPX line's gone away from that real shiny MP look, and that appeals to some players. Yeah. But I'd say the Titleist iron players probably more used to a chrome finish. And that might look more, that might look good to that eyeball. Yeah. You know? So I think it's just player preference there. But like you said, the size is. Between 760 and 770 seems to be a little pretty close. Pretty close, yeah. That was a little bit heavy. It didn't hurt too much. Alright, let's jump in and look at the 790s one last time here. Right. Yeah, pretty pretty consistent data there. Obviously, you know we've Tried our best to keep line goals and we have, and the shaft the same. Yep. Um, so a nice pattern forming with both of those irons. Obviously, you know, in the fitting process going through line angle testing and shaft testing, you know, an iron, I would say that if you were custom fit for a particular line angle and a particular shaft in your EP2, you know, those specs should translate from Titleist to TaylorMade, their, their standard line angles are a little bit different. Yep. So, you know, when you're ordering them or building them, you might be talking in terms of, you know, one flat versus half degree flat, but for the most part, you know, those that comparison was pretty much uh, very much a head-to-head -head comparison. And then the biggest difference here in these three heads is where the 790 kind of separates. This is that really strong loft, and like you said, that bigger chassis. That uh, creates that different sound and feel. And certainly, the numbers are much different here. Mm -hmm. Let's hit three more. That's a little bit thin. <laughs> well, 95 clean miss. Good for you. <laughs> I don't feel bad for it. <laughs> See if I actually hit one out of the middle this time. Nope, a little pull again. You know, it's kind of interesting there, Thomas. If you are kind of looking at the left hand side there, we have this white pattern. So we take all six shots with each. You have the 770 pattern in white. 760 pattern in yellow, so a lot of shots falling very close to each other. Two little poles, you know, it's added a little bit of distance, but yep. I know you're kind of working them for that right to left shot, so maybe just did a little more than you wanted to there. And then certainly with the 790, you know, obviously the distance is there, but you also see the pattern is quite a bit larger too. And so, you know, even though you're adding forgiveness, all that ball speed and size does for you create a little bit yep. larger pattern. So, you know, for better players, you know, that's why you, know, you look at the design of the 760, you know, they don't want to have a ton of speed foam and size mm -hmm. in the scoring clubs where better players are going to make good contact, are going to usually be pretty center face. But as you get into that five and four iron where your contact consistency might not be as sharp, you want to make sure that those off center hits create some of that ball speed that, um, 
that you might lose when you're not quite in the middle of the face. Yep, no, that um, makes sense. Now that you've hit six shots with each one, you know, obviously you kind of throughout the test were commenting on how the three irons felt. You know, for your game, how does that comparison kind of play a role in, in deciding how you would build out a set of tailor-made irons for your personal goals, knowing what you're looking for? Yeah, I mean, for my for my game, I would be obviously more interested in the 770-760 um, combination. I don't need to hit a 7 iron 200 yards carry <laughs> distance. It's just, <laughs> it's just not necessary. Right now I'm about 177 carry normally, so I mean, that's... It's going to be quite the adjustment right there. Um, yeah, it's about two clubs almost. <laughs> right. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of a lot. Um, I would say look-wise, like I mentioned, the 790 is just a little bit wider. Probably the reason why I play it is a driving iron, because it feels I've like got a little bit of forgiveness there with it. Um, but, you know, I, I like it. I like it a lot. It just it comes off a little bit too hot, a little bit too far, maybe a little bit not quite controlled, I guess. Right. Um, I'd say 760, though, the look of it with that chrome look, end of the day, really wins out for me, just by the look wise. Yeah. Um, this looks more kind of like the traditional iron. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think if we dove into your numbers a little bit deeper, you know, a lot of those things kind of hit home for what you were saying. You know, what's really interesting is, you know, even though the 790 had a much lower launch angle, so you're talking a uh, launch angle here of about 16, whereas the 760 and 770 were launching just a little bit higher. Yep. And had less spin at 5,400 compared to 65 and 6,200 with the 760 and 770 comparatively. The peak trajectory is a lot higher with the 790. So that's all that ball speed, right? Yep. And that lower center of gravity. So when you were saying, you know, I like to flight the ball closer to 100 feet, you know, that's kind of what I like with my current clubs. Um, you know, you're up at 116 feet with that 790. So all that extra peak height might do you good in a three iron. Yeah. But like you said, all that hot ball flight, um, that the unpredictability of the right and left um, as a better player, yeah, that 7 iron is just too juicy stuff. Yeah. So I think that that would eliminate that head for your game. But you know, for other for those watching, you know, yeah. we're seeing almost 17, 18 yards of difference between. 790, 760, and 770. So for those players that maybe thought about comboing 770 and 790 last year, it was really hard to make those distance gaps kind of flesh out. Yep. So you know what we're seeing with 760 is you're going to get that combination set really built in. You have an 8, 9, and wedge that are very analogous to the 770 in terms of the size, in terms of the head. You don't have the speed foam in there, so you get that really nice soft feel and the consistency of a forged head. And then you start to really build in that forgiveness and distance story as you get into the longer irons. Um, and even in the seven to seven iron comparison there, Thomas, you know, for you, you saw the 770 and 760 perform very similarly. You had just a little bit more spin with the 760. I would chalk that up to one or two that you did kind of fell right. Whereas the 760 was a little more consistently falling to the left, yep. um, which would produce that slightly lower spin rate. Uh, but the spin did stay more consistent with the 760. You only had a deviation of, of about 114, which was the best of all three irons. And certainly controlling your spin is uh, going to definitely lead to more consistency in your carry numbers. Yeah. No question. Um, so you, you get, saw a little bit of that distance component. But, you know, I think for you, like you said, for guys that are playing to a low handicap, but don't practice and play a ton and find a little bit of confidence when seeing a little bit of forgiveness down there. I think that blend of scoring irons to mid irons to long irons in those 760s will work really well for a lot of players out there. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Any, any other observations as you look at the data there, Thomas, things that kind of jumped out at you? Just across the board, seeing the consistency number of the 760, I'm looking at essentially from left to right, um, 0 0.5 consistency on the club head speed. Um, you know, everything's just essentially below one, which yeah. that stands out to me. Um, yeah, so really kind of interesting there. Um, ball speed was just a little bit higher than the 770. Obviously nowhere, nowhere as close as the 790, but that's because that club is just kind of juiced up. Right. Um, yeah, so I really, you know, launch angle a little bit higher and a little bit more consistent. So that's, that's interesting. It's not crazy high, so 17 is not that bad. Um, I, I'd be okay with flying a little bit higher as long as I know I could it kind of still hit the knock. 
and knock down shots with it too. Yeah. So, well, and that's obviously from a fitting standpoint yeah. too. That's where, you know, if we felt like for you, 760 head was an improvement over what you had, you know, throwing your current iron up against it and looking at the numbers, um, you know, using, utilizing the shaft, fine tuning the loft, talking about your golf ball, obviously, if the Pro V1X is kind of your, your go-to golf ball, we know yep. that that's a ball that, you know, in recent years has created a little more of a higher trajectory than mm -hmm. um, some other golf balls out there. So there are a lot of ways to take a head that you like from the look and feel standpoint and mess around to get that ball flight down just a little bit for you. Yep. And obviously, as a better player, you know how to flight it lower when you want to yep. as well. So, I mean, I think a lot of those things are, are pretty telling. If you look at the numbers, you know, it wasn't a perfect... Um, split between 770 and 790, but the 760 did kind of blend both irons together in a way, right? You took you took uh, a little bit of a page out of the 790, you got a little bit more ball speed. Like I said, I think we would see that even more in the longer irons yep. uh, that 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 uh, improved ball speed compared to 770. But with that smaller head and that softer feel, it's definitely appealing to the better player senses, and it's going to give you a, overall an iron that uh, is probably going to have more longevity in your bag and probably lead to lower scores, right? Yep, I agree. Yep. Excellent. Awesome, Thomas, that was great. Excellent job. I think you only missed one out of 25 shots there, so I think we all would love to hit the ball like you. I think you did an awesome job at being able to kind of illustrate the differences between those heads, not only just by communicating your thoughts and feelings holding that club, but see the data kind of supported what we were thinking is that the 760 really is more of that player's iron um, it fits into that category really nicely. Um, it is going to appeal to the senses, um, both aesthetically, um, the soft feel you commented on, that's going to hit home for a lot of better players out there. And then the way that they've incorporated the speed foam kind of progressively throughout the set is going to allow players who like that combo set idea, both from a forgiveness and a distance component standpoint in their longer irons, that set's really going to uh, appeal to a lot of those good players out there. Yeah, no, I would agree. Um, I really like the look of this this chrome look. Really, really nice. Um, looking down at it, you know, it definitely looks like a nice player's iron to look down at. Um, I'm really intrigued by this uh, speed foam idea in the long irons. Something I would, you know, I'd love to you know, get the chance to hit like three, four, five irons just to see just the forgiveness piece a little bit, maybe help a little bit um, launch wise as, as well and on the. Awesome. Great. Thanks for the feedback, Thomas. And all, all you guys watching out there, if you want to learn more about the uh, 760 irons and, and just club fitting in general, feel free to visit one of our stores or jump online to secondswing.com to learn everything you want to know about the 760 irons and just clubs in general. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.